All right, 10th grade, this is your second grammar sheet for the week, and you are finding noun clauses, okay? So, if you look at your directions, you're going to find your noun clause and then tell what it's being used as, okay? So, it's going to be used in the place of where you naturally use nouns. So, you have the subject, okay? And we've done this before in class, but I put this back up here. So, if it's used as a subject, it'll be at the beginning, just like your example there. If it is being used as a predicate nominative, then it will have a linking verb in front of it, okay? Your next two I kind of grouped together because indirect objects and direct objects both follow action verbs. Now, to differentiate between the two, remember direct objects tell you what in answer to your verb, your action verb. And then indirect objects answer the question for whom, okay? And I'll show you examples of both of those. And then your other option is an object of a prepositional phrase, which means it'll have a preposition in front, okay? And then something else here, just like with your adverb clauses that have subordinating conjunctions that start them, um, noun clauses also have certain words that start the clause. So they're called signal words. I'm going to move my sheet over for a minute and feel free to pause the video. But these are your signal words. Everything from that to whoever, whomever. These are the words you want to look for. These words will start, will signal that the noun clause is coming. Okay, so those are your signal words there. All right, I'm gonna move back over. So you're going to underline your noun clause and then in your blank out to the left, you're gonna put your abbreviation for what you think it's acting as, okay? So if we glance through number one, do we see any of our signal words there? And remember, clauses have subjects and verbs. So you'll have a subject and verb inside your clause, so remember that. So if we look through here, Here's a signal word, when. So we're gonna underline. Why am I underlining all the way to the end? Because I already have a verb in front of it. So if you have a verb, the verb of your sentence already in front of it, that means your clause will go all the way to the end, okay? So if we look in front of it, okay? Noun doesn't have, I got a verb there, right? So we are asking, is that action or linking? Action. So then we have to see, are we asking what? Are we asking for whom or to whom? That's another one. So when it would open, that's what I'm asking. So if it tells what after an action verb, direct object, okay? Number two, let's find our signal word, whoever. It's after my verb, so I go all the way to the end, and I have the word for in front. Let's see, for is a preposition, so OP is what it's acting as, okay? All right, number three, signal word who goes all the way to the end because it's after my verb, and I've got knows, action verb, so knows what? Who will win? So direct object, it is. Number four, signal word is why. So I'm, this is at the beginning, so I haven't, or I haven't already had my verb in my sentence. So I wanna make sure when I'm underlining, I only include one verb because you're gonna need a verb outside the noun clause. So we start at why. Here's my first verb is playing. So I'm gonna go and stop right in front of my next verb. And since it's at the beginning, it's acting as my subject. All right, number five, my signal word. Let's look for it. Here it is, that, and it's after my verb. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end. So we have is, what kind of verb is is? Action or linking? Hopefully you said linking. So if it follows a linking verb, Predicate nominative it is. 
And then I want to skip down and do one more just so I can uh, so I can show you an example of it. If you look at eight, we got our signal word here, whoever. So we've got whoever stops at the booth. Okay, so in front of it, we have an action verb. So it can either be a direct object or an indirect object. So if we ask, we give what? Pamphlet, calendar, that's my direct object. And we give those things to whom? The people who stop at the booth. That answers to whom? Indirect object it is. So just want to show you a, an example of the indirect object. It'll answer to whom or for whom, okay? And then I'm going to skip down to B and do a few out of here. Again, you're finding your noun clause and underlining it. And in the blank, you're telling what it's acting as. If you look at your directions, you'll notice that indirect object is not an option here. It just says subject, direct object, predicate nominative, object of a prepositional phrase. So that means I don't have to worry about the indirect object. So that means if I see an action verb in front, your only option will be direct object. So for number one, let's look for our signal word. We've got where, it's at the beginning, so I need to stop before my next verb. And if it's at the beginning, it's my subject. Number two, signal word, what? It's after a verb, so I go all the way to the end. And we have repeated, is that action or linking? Action it is, so direct object it is. Number three, signal word here all the way to the end, because it's after my verb, and I have the word to in front. So to is a preposition, so OP it is. Number four, signal word is that, it's after a verb, so it goes to the end, and will deny. Denying verb action, direct object it is. And then number five, here's my signal word, and it has the verb discovered in front. What kind of verb is that? If you say action, direct object it is. Okay, so one more time. There's your signal words. Okay, you can copy them down somewhere if that helps. And those are the words you're looking for as far as your noun clauses are concerned. And then when you try to figure out what they're acting as, look in front of it. Or, if it's at the beginning of your sentence, you know it's your subject. And that's worksheet number two for the week.